good morning my dear friends a hearty welcome to my channel mechanical engineering lecture series and myself dr m h chennaiya professor of mechanical engineering and vice principal at saptagiri college of engineering bangalore friends with my vast experience of 40 years plus in teaching this subject machine design engineering graphics strength of materials etc i decided to make some useful videos for the benefit of the teaching fraternity and also the student community i have started this channel of course very late around 3 months back and because of very good subscribers like you i have got tremendous response and friends in case you are not subscribed to my channel so far please subscribe your subscription will be a very big motivator for my preparation of more and more such videos which will help the total teaching community and also the students friends in today's session we have the design of an eccentrically loaded riveted joint i told you eccentrically loaded is a rivet system wherein the load is not acting through the center of gravity g of the system in this arrangement you can see you have a plate which is welded or riveted to a vertical plate by means of 1 2 3 4 rivets and the load is acting at a distance of 400 mm from the cg of the rivet system so first of all basically we should know how the cg and where the cg lies friends here this rivet arrangement is symmetrical about 2 and 3 about this horizontal line and hence this g is exactly in between 1 and 4 and also 2 and 3 and the distance between the load axis and the cg is given by e the eccentricity so friends we have located center of gravity of the rivet system and now you will have to start with design procedure so friends i am going to first of all find out what is the direct shear load acting on each rivet friends like in the previous session the direct load fd the direct shear load is given by p by i what is p p is the total load and that is 20 into 10 to the power of 3 newton and this load of 20 kilo newton is be being shared by 1 2 3 4 rivets so this is 4 this comes to 5000 newton or 5 kilo newton which will be acting parallel to p so i just write an arrow here to show that it is acting downward and in the direction of it similarly if the load were acting upward i would have shown this fd acting at every rivet in the vertical direction so here fd is equal to 5000 newton indicates that at the center of each rivet there will be a direct load of fd acting downward that is parallel to the applied load and this has got a magnitude of fd which is equal to 5000 newton so these arrows 5000 5000 5000 5000 suppose the load is acting upward this will be in the other direction to acting upward upward if it is at an angle like this if it is acting like this then your fd1 will be acting here through that through this through this parallel to the top light load and in the direction of it so if we can generalize this fd the direct shear load acts at the center of each rivet in the direction of p and its magnitude is equal to the total load divided by the number of rivets sharing that particular load p next friends you will have to find out in the second step what is the secondary load so 
so because of eccentricity there will be a mending moment created and this is given by the formula p into e is equal to f1 by l1 multiplied by l1 square plus l2 square plus l3 square plus l4 square so friends there are four rivets i have stopped at this if there are five you should go up to l5 and so on and so forth friends what are these values of p and e p is the total load so p is equal to 20 kilo newton 20 into 10 to the power of 3 newton and this e eccentricity is equal to 400 mm and the values of l1 l2 l3 what are these l1 l2 friends from the center of gravity to the rivet number 1 is called l1 so in this problem this l1 is equal to 150 which is same as l4 so similarly l2 is this distance l2 is equal to 50 mm and is also equal to l3 so l1 and l3 are equal because of the symmetry so many millimeter and uh, we know all these values are here so i will substitute here and find out what is f1 friends p is 20 into 10 to the power of 3 multiplied by 400 p into e is equal to f1 the secondary load acting at rivet 1 divided by l1 l1 is 150 bracket l1 and l4 are same so i will write down two times l1 square two times 150 square plus two times this l2 square two times 50 square and friends you will get the value of f1 and friends this f1 works out to i'll give the value this f1 works out to uh, 533.33 f1 is 16000 16000 newton this is 16000 newton this is a value of our f1 friends once you know this f1 and before uh you know the value of this f1 let us see how this f1 acts friends this f1 will act at rivet number 1 perpendicular to l1 perpendicular to this so as to produce a clockwise moment about g because this p is producing a clockwise moment so i am going to show here this f1 will be acting at rivet number 1 perpendicular to l1 producing a clockwise moment next coming to this f2 f2 will be acting normal to l2 so as to produce a clockwise moment f2 then then f3 will be acting here because it has to produce a clockwise moment about g similarly f4 will be perpendicular to this l4 so as to produce a clockwise moment friends once you have f1 we can find out the other three f2 f3 and f4 friends you have got f1 by l1 is equal to f2 by l4 f4 by l4 so here l One is equal to L four. Therefore, F one is equal to F four. That is equal to sixteen thousand newton. Similarly, if you want to find out the other F two and F three, you can say F two by L two is equal to F three by L three. Since L two is equal to l3 which is equal to 50 we can say f2 is equal to f3 because this l2 is equal to l3 so how to find out that we know f1 let us equate 
एफ वन बै एल वन इज ईक्वल टू एफ टू बै एल टू फ्रेंड्स एफ वन इज सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड बै एल वन इज वन फिफ्टी इज ईक्वल टू एफ टू टू बी फाउंड आउट बै एल टू विच इज ईक्वल टू फिफ्टी सो एफ टू विल बी ईक्वल टू वन थर्ड ऑफ दैट दैट विल बी थ्री फाइव ऑफ फिफ्टीन वन थ्री थ्री फाइव थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री न्यूटन फ्रेंड्स यू गॉट ऑल द वैल्यूज द वैल्यू ऑफ एफ वन एफ टू एफ थ्री एट्सेट्रा फ्रेंड्स इन ऑल दिस प्रॉब्लम्स यू कैन ऑब्जर्व दैट रिवेट नंबर वन एट रिवेट नंबर वन रिवेट नंबर टू रिवेट नंबर थ्री एंड फोर दे डायरेक्ट लोड्स एफ डी and the secondary loads are acting normal to each other friends you have the formula to find out what is the resultant load so if you consider the rivet number 1 the total load resultant load at that will be fd square plus f1 square plus square root of or you can say square root of f1 square plus f2 square Plus two times F T F two cos theta. So I will just write down that and let us see. So I will say at resultant load at one rivet number one is equal to square root of F D square plus F one square plus two times F D F one cos theta. What is the theta? Theta is the angle between the direct load and the secondary load. In all these four cases, that angle is 90. Cos 90 is zero, and hence this term will vanish. So at rivet number one, we have this value square root of 5000 square plus f1 square is 16000. Square and this F R one is equal to F R four because they have the same value F R four. Similarly, if you take the second one, that rivet number two and rivet number three, we can say F R two is equal to F R three. Three is equal to square root of. Five thousand square plus five thousand three hundred thirty-three point three three square. So, friends, it is very obvious from this F R one is equal to F R four, F R two and F R three. The rivets at one and two are rivet number one and rivet number four are heavily loaded, or they are critically loaded. and hence you can equate or you can say the rivets at 1 r at 2 are heavily loaded and you can write on the formula f r 1 is equal to f r 4 is equal to pi d square by 4 into tau that is pi by 4 into diameter to be found out shear stress is that And this is equated to F R one. That is equal to square root of five thousand square plus the other one is the other value got sixteen thousand square under root. Friends, by equating these two, you will be able to arrive at the value of the diameter of the rivet. We can just complete the solution. And obtain the diameter of the rivet. And friends, this on calculation works out to works out to um, a value eighteen point eight six. This works out to eighteen point eight six millimeter, and we obtain diameter equal to twenty mm. That is a standard size available, friends. i hope this session was interesting 
and you are able to gather the information required for solving a problem on this riveted giant which has got only one line of rivets. In the sessions to come, I am going to teach you some more problems on this eccentrically eroded riveted joint because this is one of the most important questions asked on this chapter eccentrically loaded riveted giants. Friends, I hope this session was interesting. If you find it interesting, do subscribe without fail. Share the information with all your friends. And this is Dr. M. H. Chennaya signing off.